Today, I want to talk about my results with the Beauty Pie Youth Balm. <laughs> and it's long overdue. I've been a little busy. I actually started using the Youth Balm probably about three and a half months ago now, and this portion of the video is in partnership with Beauty Pie, and I'm really excited about that because I love this stuff. <laughs> it's really hard for me to find serums or something to put on my face that I feel really, really good about. I'd say 90% of the products I get sent don't make the cut, and then I find a lot on my own, believe it or not, that don't get sent to me that are very, very affordable and very, very good. Beauty Pie actually sent this to me a few months back and asked me to try it. I did, which I do with a lot of products. I try them and I see what the results are. If they're good, I talk about them. If they're not, I generally just let it fade away. If I feel like there's just a really good reason why it doesn't work, I'll mention it. But generally, the products I mention on my channel are the ones that I feel are really, really good. Here are my results based on the last probably three and a half months with the Youth Balm from Beauty Pie. I love this stuff. I really, really love this stuff for a few reasons. First of all, it's just a really lovely, luscious serum. In other words, using it feels really, really good. And I'll go ahead and put this on and <laughs> as I'm talking about it. I take one pump, some mornings I take two, just depending. And I know that people are gonna wonder, how long does a bottle last you? And the answer is, I think it lasts me probably a month and a half to two months. Now, I haven't really labeled the bottle with the date and then marched through until it was empty, so I don't know the dates exactly or how long exactly it's gonna last, but I'm thinking it's gonna last me about a month and a half to two months. There are a lot of reasons why I'm continuing to use this serum. It is a little bit more expensive than let's say the Ordinary or some other serums or lotions or moisturizers that I use on my skin, but oh my gosh, I really, really love it because it does so many things. It's a brightener, it's a firmer, it has peptides in it. It makes my skin just look really pretty and glowy, kind of like an airbrushed look on my face. I love the fact that it really has made my morning routine a lot easier because I get a lot of benefits from this one serum that has cut out other serums that I might have used in my morning routine. It really is a lovely serum. Now I want to read to you what they say on the website, and I know that's marketing verbiage, but I think there are some important points that I want to share. I need my glasses because I can't see. Here is a breakdown of what is in this serum and the reason why I love it so much. It is a complex of 15 active ingredients, including di, tri, and hexapeptides. We all know that peptides are so good for our skin. Proteins, exopolysaccharides, superhydrators, soothers to visibly help firm, resurface, brighten, tighten, hydrate and glow all in one bottle. And you know that all in one bottle line right there? That's really true. <laughs> It does all those things. I really love this serum. And when I say I love it, it's right up there with the niacinamide from The Ordinary and a few others that I think are just spectacular products. It's really priced well for all that goes into it and it really is a lovely serum. If you're not familiar with Beauty Pie, I'll kind of outline how Beauty Pie works. They are a membership company. In other words, you get an annual membership and I have a discount code for that down below. It's very, very reasonable and you can sign up for a 30-day trial period now to try it for 30 days to see if you like it. The products from Beauty Pie I'm telling you, it's like a hidden secret. I don't know why everyone isn't screaming about this from the rooftops. They are so luxury. And if you're into beautiful packaging and just really lovely products at amazing prices, truly it's almost drugstore prices. And some of their products are drugstore priced. They're so luxurious. They are packaged so beautifully. When you get your Beauty Pie order, it's so pretty. It's in a pink box with pink tissue paper when you open it up. It's really a lovely experience. But not only is it aesthetically pleasing, there really are great products. Some of my holy grails come from Beauty Pie. This Youth Balm is one of them. Now, have I loved everything from Beauty Pie? No, I don't love everything from anyone. <laughs> 
There's no company out there that hits it out of the park for me with every single product. But what I can say is that for the price point, for the beautiful, luxurious packaging, for the quality product, Beauty Pie is just a great deal in my opinion. It really, really is. My takeaway from the Youth Bomb is that I'm absolutely going to continue using it. It's really hard for something to worm its way into my skincare routine these days because I do feel like I have a very, very good, very, very affordable, effective skincare routine. This has kicked a few things out of my routine. I no longer use vitamin C serum because I'm getting my brightening from this. This just hits a lot of the areas that I'm looking for in a serum. So loving the Youth Bomb from Beauty Pie. If you haven't tried this and you're thinking about it, give the 30-day free trial a try because that way you can give it a whirl. It's a great price with the membership and you'll have a 30-day free membership just to try it out. It's really a lovely serum. I use this first thing in the morning after I hydrate my face. Right now I'm using the Ion Skin Support, but you can use any kind of hydrator, even just the moisture that's on your face from rinsing it off. And then I go in with my Youth Balm because this is the foundational serum in my routine. So Beauty Pie Youth Balm, absolutely love it. It's a winner with me. I'm so glad they asked me to try it because I don't think I would have tried it otherwise because I was really, really happy with my skincare routine. I'm happier with this in it now. Things are about to get crazy. So Haley and Carson are working on a no dig area of the garden. <laughs> except we're not going to plant in the garden. It's going to be a container area. So what we're doing is Carson went around and weed eated all underneath that cardboard. And then Haley, bless her heart, laid down all this cardboard and we're going to wet it, which we've done, and then put mulch on top of that. And on top of the mulch is going to go the little raised bed planters, you know, the little fabric planters that I had showed you guys earlier. I wanted to do this because I wanted things to look clean and fresh around here. I didn't want weeds all around the planters. So it's just another one of those things that you take a little time and energy to do to make things look a lot better down the road and here comes the man with the plants we got lots going on here today I tell you what boy you are handier than a pocket on a shirt <laughs> <laughs> I try how are you I do good how are good, you good. good to see you and it's Jackson we got all kind of help here today man <laughs> oh, I love that that's so pretty I know I, I get the train and the church bells that's awesome <laughs> it's, it's Sweet. So what I'm going to do is take the plants and I'm just going to place them like I see them in okay. my mind. But okay. this is your yard. You got to pull up to it every day, not me. So if you want to move stuff around, you do. You'd be surprised at how much more I have more confidence in you than me. <laughs> and also the ones along the fence line. Yeah. I told Carson that you'd probably, you know, lay them out yeah. the way that you think they would be best. Okay. So we'll check it out. We got lots happening. That's some pretty mulch. I got to show you guys what's in the trailer. Look at this, you guys. It's a beautiful thing to see on my new babies. I'm gonna make everything all pretty around here. See this, what I'm holding in my hand? This is a hose. Now watch this. Hey, Ryan. Hey, howdy. What am I holding in my hand? That is a Flexzilla, the best hose they make. You're supposed to say hose pipe. Oh, hose pipe. I'm sorry. That's a Flexzilla <laughs> hose pipe. See, there's a language barrier. What do y'all call it? It's a hose. It's not a hose pipe. No, what about Carson and Haley? What do you... It's a hose pipe. Think yeah, from see, around here. Th there's a language barrier here in the South. <laughs> y'all say hose pipe? So we got lots of projects going on here and I think in the next couple of days it's going to be wrapping up and changes are going to be made. Haley and Carson are working back here making the area where the planter pots, the fabric planter pots are going to be. They're going to make it a lot prettier. Of course Ryan brought me some mulch earlier in the week. <laughs> you can see we're pretty rich in mulch. And my boy here Jackson and his daddy Ryan are unloading the plants and we're going to be installing them in the planter beds over there. 
And then right here in the middle of the lawn is a big old pile. It looks like sand, but this is actually top dressing. And that's going to go on the lawn. We're going to be working to get this lawn in better shape. I don't know that it'll ever be perfectly beautiful, but we're definitely going to get it looking better than it is right now. And I just have to give you guys yet another glimpse of my front patio. Isn't that just so much prettier than it was? I am just so tickled with it. It feels so good to drive up and see this so happy 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 <laughs> to have a prettier looking front porch i got your favorite oh your sunshines those are beautiful So I think I've got everything laid out pretty much like I want it. But again, this is your yard, so you move stuff if you want. Over here, uh, tucked up in the shade, we did the oak leaf hydrangea. And this will give you nice fall color and big summer blooms next summer. And they kind of get massive. They look really natural planted in groups like this. And then we kind of transition over to the full sun hydrangea. This is one of my favorites from Proven Winners. This is Quick Fire Fab. So these will fade into a nice pink wine color and then these are the ones we were talking about the other day that you can cut paint and use for floral decorations for the holidays we've got another pw this is sugar tip so this is a hibiscus loaded with buds give you nice pink um, you know blooms here probably next week the contrast <laughs> really well with the wall there quick and, action we like quick action <laughs> and then i had to throw in some conifers for you to kind of remind you of uh, out west so we've got another proven winners this is a little flips magic arborvitae so that way we have something happen during the winter too because some of the, most of these over here that we've already discussed are going to go dormant they're going to lose their leaves we need something that's going to you know still have foliage during the winter and this is another one that will have foliage during the winter. This is our um, Sunshine Ligustrum. So that will fill up this area really nice with the pretty chartreuse foliage. And then your uh, variegated lower petalum here will contrast really well with the chartreuse foliage of the Ligustrum. And so we kind of copied that theme with the Ligustrum and the lower petalum in this bed. This is a cool one. This is Candy Corn Spirea. So all the new growth be this really cool orange color and it looks just like the candy corn that you oh, eat for Halloween oh, fun. and you'll have some nice really pink, um, pink blooms in the spring and then we threw in a couple of perennials so you've got your foxglove or digitalis right here these are biannuals so you'll get a couple years out of these guys and uh, they will you know multiply and we'll have a lot more flower spikes coming up but just a beautiful flower and give us a little bit of height too right here in this corner Got your beautiful planters that you did that look <laughs> all amazing. You, you kicked it, kicked butt on that one. And then to kind of match the the big canna on the other side, we're going to throw in this Proven Winners Colocasia Coffee Cups. This is one of my favorites. It catches the rain, and as the leaf fills up, it tips out, pours it out, stands back up, and does it all over again. So really cool plant. And let's see, on the other side... We've got our Encore Azaleas, so you're going to get another bloom. Spring, obviously, is when you get, you know, the big Azalea bloom around here. But with Encore, you get another one in the fall. So you'll get some color here soon in the coming weeks. So we did that there. And then we did another uh, Evergreen here. 
really pretty viburnum. I love the foliage on this guy. And that's one thing we were trying to do too is mix up your foliage so that you have some interest not only in flowers, but just, you know, look how wispy this is versus this guy. And then you've got this glossy big leaf here. So it just kind of breaks it up a little bit. Then we've got your Budlia. So you can watch your butterflies all summer long. And this is the dwarf uh, Pugster series. So it stays two foot tall, two foot wide. Heavily fragrant and butterflies will love it. Added some yarrow down here for your perennials. And then another kind of focal point on the end right here uh, with this conifer. And then some Coreopsis down there for another perennial. And your beds are full. And I think they look pretty good, but I'm biased, so. Hello! Good morning, my friends! <laughs> and we get to go get some good vibes! <laughs> the Aiken girls are heading off for the big city. <laughs> <laughs> so tell the nice ladies, what are we doing today? We are going to a sound healing uh, slash Reiki, mini Reiki session. <laughs> in so, where? In Augusta, Georgia. This one is just in a small um, studio. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're so excited. So we're <laughs> off for the day. <laughs> so here's our sweet little location in Augusta. The drive was really easy. <laughs> Wink, quick. Um, this is Jody. This is our Reiki master. And it's going to be sound healing today, too. So are the sound bowls over here. And here's the beautiful space. Ooh, I'm so excited for this. And can you tell that Jen is excited? She's in her element. Oh. The next thing on the work agenda for me this morning is to plant some more vegetables. Now that I've got that container garden area looking a lot better and my containers in place, I'm going to go ahead and start planting some additional vegetables. I have these bush beans. I have never planted beans. This will be an interesting experiment for me. Then, of course, some Swiss chard. I love Swiss chard. Oh, my gosh. Sauteed quickly and then over some brown rice. So delicious. I'm also going to do some kale. Of course, I love those really mineral-rich, nutrient-rich, deep greens. Then I'm going to do some beets. Roasted beets are awesome. And beets are actually really, really easy to grow. And then the last thing I'm going to plant today are some radishes. So not planting a whole lot, but I definitely am getting some things together for a later fall and early winter harvest. With the radishes, I only planted half the pot. Because radishes grow really, really quickly, I'm going to succession. So in about two to three weeks, I'm gonna plant the other half of the pot. Then when I harvest the first batch, I'm going to replant that area and do that until it gets too cold to plant them at all. I bought tomato cages for my cherry tomato plants. <laughs> I hope they're going to produce fruit. These tomato cages are generally really flimsy. In other words, they're not going to hold up when you have a very vigorous tomato plant. I'm going to show you a little trick that I do where you can get these inexpensive tomato cages and have them work out. There's going to be two cages per plant and that might sound excessive, but wait until you see what this little trick is you're gonna see that it's probably worth it. First thing I'm gonna do is set the first one this way on the plant so that the top of the tomato cage is actually at the base of the tomato plant in the dirt. 
The second cage is going to go on top and the little prongs are going to dig into the dirt. So you have two cages, one with a strong base and one with a strong top. Trust me, it'll hold your tomatoes up a lot better than just one of these flimsy cages. I want to show you a huge improvement we made to the raised bed vegetable containers yesterday. <laughs> Look at how beautiful this is compared to what it was. This area was all weeds. And what we did is, first of all, we weed-eated all the weeds down. And then we laid down cardboard all over this whole area, which covered up the weeds and the dirt underneath. We did not put compost in this area. And then we wet the cardboard down. Look at Lucy's over here going nuts on the ground. <laughs> She's loving the digging. Anyway, then we wetted the cardboard down so it was really, really soggy and put a whole bunch of mulch on top of it. And you can see down here, I think you can see how thick the mulch is. It's really quite thick in this area. And then we put the containers on top of it. So the containers are spaced out so I'll be able to walk in in between them and water easily and just deal with each individual plant and then right on the other side are my green stock containers on either side of the driveway and then we added this additional raised bed container and this is what I'm going to do my kind of seasonal theme in for instance, when the mums come in, which is going to be really, really shortly, I'll put the mums in here so that when I drive up, I see all these beautiful mums. Then when it's time to plant the pansies, I can do that. During the holidays, I could put some poinsettias in here. So this will kind of be my little seasonal feature area. But look at what a difference this is with this mulch down here instead of just the weeds. It just looks absolutely beautiful. I am sitting on the front porch <laughs> drinking my morning coffee and hulling bees. <laughs> if that's not a southern thing, I don't know what is. These are purple hull peas. I've never heard of these before until recently and they're actually selling these by the boatload at the local farmers market. I was watching people buy them. I was watching several vendors sell them, both in the shell and shelled. And I didn't know what they were and I'd never heard of them and I didn't want to try them because I didn't know what to do with them. Then one of you left a comment down below in the comment section <laughs> that these are really, really good. Made me curious. So at the last farmers market, I picked up a pound of the peas. These are purple hull peas. I picked up a pound right here in the shell. This was three dollars for a pound in the shell. And I also picked up a baggie of peas that have been shelled. I don't know how much this weighs. It was nine dollars. No, wait. I think it was eight dollars. So I have them shelled and I also have them in the shell. The reason I got both is I just really wanted to do a deep dive into this whole purple hull pea thing. I've never heard of them, never cooked them. I'm going to hull the pound that I bought and I'm going to cook them with these for lunch this afternoon. Wish me luck. I've never done this before. I've actually watched a YouTube video on cooking purple hull peas and I have a recipe. So I'm going to put that together in a little while after I shell these. So wish me luck that I can figure out how to do it quickly and efficiently. I am certain there are ladies in my neighborhood that could shell a pound of peas in no time. To cook the beans, I've heated up some olive oil in a pan. <laughs> it might be a little bit too hot. And I'm adding one onion. I used a red onion just because that's what I had. I'm sure you could use a yellow onion as well. I also have three cloves of garlic. And I'm going to saute this until the onion is translucent and soft. For the recipe, I'm kind of just winging it. I looked online and got a gist for how you cook these and I'm sort of just putting together my own little recipe. So sauteing the onions until they're nice and soft and translucent and then we'll start adding the other ingredients. Oh my gosh, this onion and garlic is smelling so very good. Yum. 
Now I'm adding about eight slices of diced bacon, and I'm going to go ahead and cook that up until the bacon is a little bit rendered into the pot. Now I'm going to add my rinsed purple hull peas. The color of these is so pretty. It's just so subtle and beautiful. For my liquid, I'm going to be using this Zoop Bone Broth Chicken Broth, which I really, really love. This is a great brand. You can find it in almost any grocery store. So I'm going to go ahead and put this whole jar and make sure that my peas are covered completely, which they are. Give it a quick stir. And then I'm going to bring this to a boil. I'm going to turn the heat up a bit. Once I've gotten it to a nice boil, I'm going to turn it down and simmer it for a few hours. I will be checking every so often to see if my peas are ready. I don't know how I'm going to know if they're ready. I suppose if they're tender. I haven't done this before. But I am looking forward to giving these a taste test. The purple hull peas are done. <laughs> They cooked for about, I think, an hour and a half, and I turned them off when they were just getting tender and then let them just cool in the pot. And oh my gosh, you guys, they're so delicious. They have a flavor. Mmm. It's kind of a combination between a pea and a bean. I know that sounds like confusing, but that's what I think of when I eat them. It has that comfort food satisfaction of a pot of pinto beans. If you've ever done that, and that's one of my favorite comfort dishes is pinto beans, these are delicious. But here's the deal. I don't know how helpful this has been because those of you who can get these probably already know how to cook these and already love them. And those of you who have never had these are probably living in an area where you can't necessarily get them. They're called purple hull peas. I found them at the farmer's market. You can get them <laughs> had several vendors in my local farmer's market. At the end of the cooking session, I went ahead and seasoned them with salt and pepper. And I did add just a little bit of cayenne pepper and a little bit of garlic powder just to pump up the flavor a little bit. They are so delicious. It's so rich and satisfying. Whoever it was that said, try those peas, <laughs> thank you, I love you. <laughs> This is wonderful. I ended up only cooking that $8 bag that I showed you guys in the beginning because I realized I've got a whole pot and now I'm going to have to eat these. And I'm going to go ahead and haul the rest and maybe cook them in a few days. So a huge success for me. These purple hull peas, absolutely delicious. And now I'm going to go eat this whole bowl. I'm going to go ahead and call it and stop here for now. I'm not really sure if it's something that's going to work or if it's a hot mess. So what I'm going to do is actually hang it in the area of my living room where I want it to live. And I'm going to look at it for the next few days, maybe even a couple of weeks. And I think that there might be some changes that I want to make or I'm going to decide it's just fine. At any rate, I'm going to wait until I've lived with it for a little while before I order the frame for it. Not that I couldn't order the frame now, I absolutely could. But I think if I live with it for a little bit, I'll have a clearer picture on what kind of frame I want. and just how I'm going to move forward with it. I'm pretty happy with the color palette. It works for my living room decor, and I'm happy with the kind of persimmon color that I've added in. I think it's gonna help tie that color into my living room. This is literally the third time I've sat down to do my makeup to go to the bank. <laughs> and I've never made it to the bank. I have done my makeup twice in my hair and put on a dress because I wanna go open a local bank account. And both times I've done it before, I've gotten busy and never got it done. So here I am trying again. This is the third time. <laughs> 
So wish me luck. And you know what? It's sounding a little echoey in here to me. It probably is. I'm going to have to put some blankets on the wall or something like that. So just stick with me and I'll fix it for the future. Before we get started on the makeup or before I get started on the makeup, I want to talk about two things. The first is my hair. <laughs> Yoel, I think that's how you pronounce his name, from Hi L, which is the hair care line that I use on my hair. And this morning I just washed my hair and blow dried it with my Revlon One Step. He sent me a prototype of a bodybuilding conditioner for his hair care line. And oh my gosh, I hope he comes to market with it. I think he's sort of just still dinking around with it. My hair is so soft and has so much body and look at how shiny it is. I'm telling you what, that stuff is the bomb. And you know what, when he sent it to me, he included a shampoo, but the conditioner was in a little like sample bottle without a label or anything and it was tucked in the wrapping in the box and I almost threw it out. I'm so glad I eventually found it. Anyway, so that's about my hair. The other thing is, is either miracles happen or this stuff works. <laughs> This is the Murad Environmental Shield Rapid Dark Spot Correcting Serum. I'll tell you what, I am so surprised. You know, I get skincare sent to me all the time. I rarely think it's going to work. <laughs> And so I generally go into it with a pessimistic attitude. Murad sent me several products right as I was packing to move. So clearly not a good time for me to be able to sit down and focus and look at what they sent me. But I did grab this, not because dark spots are a huge part of my skincare routine because it's never been a huge issue for me. However, I had developed a dark spot underneath my chin right in this area right here. And you can barely see it right now. <laughs> and you know what? Before I started using this, it was really brown. Like it was really obviously brown and it just popped up all of a sudden. So when Murad sent me this, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and use the dark spot remover or serum. I'm not sure what they call it. I can barely read it. I only have my contact in. And I have been using this fairly regularly since I was sort of at the end of packing up and moving. So that's probably a little less than two months. Oh my gosh, I was so surprised when I looked this morning, that dark spot is almost gone, which is really, really surprising for me because I don't really, you know, put much stock in products like this. So either miracles happen or this stuff really works. Now, how does this compare to other dark spot removers? I have no idea because I haven't really used any. I just grabbed this and started using it really as sort of a side. So I don't have a picture of that, although I'm sure it's in some of my makeup videos. Not that I pointed it out, but you could just see it. I'm really impressed. And also, it seems like the spots on the sides of my face, I have some age spots there, are looking a little bit lighter as well. So the Murad Environmental Help, I can barely read it. Anyway, I'll have it linked down below. I think this might be a little bit pricey. However, I have been using this fairly consistently for about a little less than two months, like I said, and it still feels like there's a lot in the bottle. There's no way for me to really look in the bottle to see how much is in there. So I think it might be a good deal because I think it's gonna last fairly long. If you have dark spots and you've been frustrated, you might give this a try because I think it really works. So now I'm going to put on some makeup which I haven't done since the last time I put on some makeup to go to the bank. This is the Stila One Step Correct Primer. I'm still just using this up. I haven't unpacked the rest of my makeup yet, so this is the only primer that I have out right now. Now it's the Beauty Pie Under Eye Genius. Still madly in love with this, and look it. I've actually sort of hit pan. Do you call this a pan when it's a cream product? I don't know. This really helps to hold on to my concealer and it really does improve the look of my under eyes even without concealer as evidenced by the fact that I had forgotten to put on my concealer so many times when I've used this because my under eyes just look better. I'm going to do fairly light makeup today. It's going to be hot. You know, I'm in the South. It's hot. It's just a theme for another month or two. Maybe six weeks. I think six weeks. This is the Kosas Brow Pop Brow Pencil in the color Blonde. 
This is pretty much my favorite brow pencil. Although you know what? I was thinking the other night, I wish this was even lighter because I have seen a few videos where blonde gals, you know, I'm blonde, I pay for it to be blonde. <laughs> I'm not this blonde naturally. Anyway, that blonde gals use a much lighter pencil and I think it looks really nice. So I wish they would come out with an even lighter one than this. Okay, so I broke down and went to get my glasses. I can't see anything this morning for some reason. For eyeshadow, I'm gonna use this little Wet n Wild five pan palette. These are really good. If you haven't tried these, they're great for the price point and they're great even for a higher price point. This is in the color Walking on Eggshells. I'm gonna do a really, really simple eye look today and I'm just going to use this color right in the middle, right here as an all over lid color. I might do a little deepening in the crease. We'll see how it looks first, but today is just gonna be a simple little eye look. I'm gonna take a big fluffy brush. This is the Angie 503 brush, really a nice one for quick work on the eyes. So I'm just going to very softly apply that all over the lid. And as I get less on my brush, I'm gonna move it up to the eyebrow area. Isn't that a pretty color? Just really nice. When you put this on your lid with your finger, it's just like the best lid color because it's a little bit more opaque and a little bit deeper. You just get a lot more color payout. As I'm using it this way, it's gonna be pretty sheer and just add a nice little glow and warmth to the lid. For foundation today, I'm trying the Neutrogena Serum Foundation. This is new to me, and I think I actually picked it up when I was traveling here to the East Coast. This is in the color Light 02. I think I've used this once before. I didn't film it. It was just I wanted a little bit of more even skin tone. I was going out for something. So I'm going to go ahead and use this today. I haven't really been that much into heavy foundation since I moved here just because, you know, it is so humid that getting something to lay down on your skin is kind of a challenge. So that was sort of one pump on the back of my hand. I'm going to add another and see if that gets us where we need to go. And I'm just using my Sigma sponge. I'm thinking this is just a nice, light, sheer coverage. Okay, that's looking really pretty, really natural. Doesn't even really look like I have foundation on my skin. It has just evened out the skin tone. I'm actually kind of liking it. I thought the color might be a little bit too light, but it's working out okay. So, so far, so good. I'll go ahead and check in with you guys the next time I talk about makeup in a video and let you know how it wore for the day. For concealer today, it's the Tarte Shape Tape Creamy Concealer. Still loving this one. Just going to use a tiny amount. A little bit goes a long way with this concealer. And I'm just going to press it in with my sponge. That's why I love the little tip on this sponge. You can see it's just perfect for getting in that under eye area. Now I'm going to set that concealer down with my Kosas Cloud Set Powder. You know, Kosas is such a good brand. I don't know that I've tried anything from them that I didn't really, really like. Maybe I need to do an all Kosas makeup day. That would be kind of fun. For bronzer, I'm using the Kat Von D. This is a cream or liquid bronzer, depending on how you categorize this kind of product. Has a little doe foot applicator, and I'm just gonna apply it to the areas that I want a little bit more contour. Of course, always under my chin. <laughs> this gives a really, really natural look. So I'm just gonna take my stipple brush and press that in, blend it around. Now I'm gonna go back in with my sponge and just press around the edges. In my opinion, makeup for older women is all about blending. Just blending, blending, blending. So things just look more natural. You know, I have a lot of extra crinkles and wrinkles on my face now, so I definitely like my makeup to look like it blends in. For blush today, I'm using the Milani Dulce Pink Blush. This has a really pretty little gold reflect in it, so it's just lovely on the complexion. Very bright and fresh. I'm gonna go back in with my sponge again and just press that in. For a highlight today, I'm using one of my favorite highlighters. This is from Makeup by Mario, and it's the Color Pearl. This is glorious. However, it's been sold out forever. 
I don't know if it's back in stock now. If it is, I'll have it listed down below. It really is just so very pretty. And the thing that I love about it is that it literally just melts into the skin. It doesn't look like you've got highlights sitting on top of your face. Really pretty. I'm just gonna take what's left of my brush and right underneath my brows, and just a beautiful glow. Mmm, so pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and tight line with the L'Oreal Lay Liner. Use the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Base and the Maybelline Sky High Mascara, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm ready for the bank. <laughs> I finished up my eye makeup with my mascara and tight line. And on my lips today, I have the NYX Pencil in Whipped Caviar, and then I've really been loving this Milani Keep It Full. This is the color Soft Rose. Isn't that just a really pretty lip? I love it. It's just so soft and natural. I think I'm actually going to make it to the bank today because I don't have anything else on my calendar. I'm not going to stop in any furniture stores. I'm not going to go by Tuesday morning. I'm going to go directly to the bank. So wish me luck that I get there. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this vlog fun, useful, and helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. You know, I just get so tickled when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. Make it a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.